So we are closing our Wake O Sleeper series, and I wanted to start uh, this sermon with the way that we started the other sermons with these words from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. I'm going to start out uh, sharing the first part of this, this scripture and invite you to respond with uh, the last part. Uh, if you have your Facebook open and you're able to type it in, please do so we can see it. So here are these words from Ephesians chapter 5, 14. Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for the gift of your word and for the way that your word continues to inspire us, continues to challenge us, but continues to help us to see that we are yours. We pray that as we move through this time together that you allow your spirit to, to be with the words of my mouth and be with the meditation of our hearts uh, all over the place and allow us to hear your word proclaimed. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I said, we're concluding the Awake, O Sleeper series today, and it's helped me uh, get a new view uh, of what our faith should be like. Our, our faith is not a, a sleepy kind of faith. Our faith should be one that is awakened and one that is uh, out in the world proclaiming who Jesus Christ is to each and every one of us. And I pray that uh, even as we close this series that you keep this idea in the front of your mind. That, that we continually need to be awakened because it is so easy, my friends, for us just to be lulled back to sleep. But we need to be awakened to who we are in Jesus Christ and, and focusing on that important part of our identity, our identity as ones in whom Christ dwells and delights and living in his unshakable kingdom. And the, over the past three weeks, we've talked about the different ways that we can do that. First, we must always fix our eyes upon Jesus. If our eyes aren't on Jesus, we're missing the mark. If our eyes aren't on him, we, we can't see how it is that we are to be living fully in our lives. As Hebrews reminds us that he is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So, so we look towards him for how we should live our lives. And, and one of the ways that we do that is, is how we set our hearts and minds on him. And we do that by, by thinking of things above, those things from God, of how we are to live our lives and how we are to, to move forward as bold witnesses of the gospel. And today we're going to explore how, how do we do that? How do we fully live out our lives? And that is being rooted in Jesus Christ. Our scripture for this morning is written in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And I advise you to listen as we hear God's word proclaimed. Paul writes these words, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. See, I love how this passage gives us kind of the, the end game of what it means to be rooted in Christ. We are strengthened in the faith. We are overflowing with thanksgiving. But the question comes to me, how do we live in those gracious gifts? Our scripture says that we must have our lives fully rooted in him so that, so that we may have those gifts fully in our lives. Author J.D. Walt, he, he put it this way, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the singular yet comprehensive solution to all that is broken in our lives and in the world. See, my friends, that is what we as followers of Jesus must remember, that, that everything that is broken, that is distorted, 
that that is that is mis, misconstrued in the world. All of it can be fixed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just don't know how to fully live that out. I think sometimes it's easy for us to grasp faith in Jesus Christ, kind of like a uh, a fire alarm. You know, if you walk around the building, you see these little red boxes where there's glass over the little alarm that you pull, and you feel you feel comforted and you feel uh, confident knowing that if you are in trouble, you can go over to that fire alarm and you can pull it, and, and, and the fire department will come. I think sometimes that's how we look at our faith. Sometimes I think we, we look at our faith as something that we can go to or, or something that we can pull from when we are in trouble. But the matter of the fact is, is that being awake in Christ means so much more than just having some kind of fire insurance. It, it, it helps us to see how we can live our lives in Christ right here and right now. There's another word that we have for that. Another word that I think really kind of gets us a picture of what it means to be rooted in Christ. And, and that word is to dwell or, or, or to abide. And when we abide in the way of Christ, we are taking the opportunity, not just trying to take God for how we can use the gifts that he has for us, but when we take time to abide in Christ, we, we hold on to the gifts that he has given us. And we use those gifts daily so we can continue to grow as his disciples. Jesus gives us this picture in, in, in John chapter 15, verse 5, when he's talking to his disciples and he reminds them that I am the vine. You are the branches. We, we have that picture that, that Jesus is, is the vine, that we are the branches too. And then he reminds us that if we remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. See, that is what abiding is. Abiding means that we continue to remain in Christ. And we try to do things to, to allow him to, to, to give us the life and the energy we need to, to move through day after day after day. To abide in, in Jesus Christ, there, there, are, there are things that we must do. First, we must continue to engage in God's word. We must take the opportunity and time to listen for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We must be active in the world around us, and we must expand God's kingdom. And here are the ways that we can do this right here at Royce City First United Methodist Church. First, that we, we can engage in God's word. It, it, it reminded me uh, a, a meeting that I had uh, this, this past week as we were talking about discipleship. One of the things that I heard one of the participants in, in this meeting say is that it, it, it's amazing to me how we, we expect to hear from God one hour a Sunday. And, and then, then we, we leave the sanctuary or, or, or we leave the, the online viewing. And, and then we go out into the world and then we become discipled by the things that are around us. See, if we fail to take the time and opportunity to engage in God's word, we will let other things disciple us. We will let other things give us the way that we are to respond to the world around us and that we fail to respond in the way that Jesus calls us to respond. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we have uh, small groups that, that are continuing to meet uh, through this time together. You know, I just want to, we have a, a one uh, study that's going to start up this upcoming Wednesday uh, on the book of Romans. And, and uh, it'll be a, a video series and, and we'll have great discussion and we'll dig into the entire book. And uh, we're, we're going to uh, start this study this week so that we can allow God's word to, to dwell 
deep inside of us. Another way that we can do that is starting in February, we're going to start our second dwelling in scripture passage. This past month, we've been dwelling in uh, Psalm 23. And I tell you, my friends, I have needed Psalm 23 this month more than, than I thought I needed. I, I originally picked that passage just because I knew how familiar it was to a lot of people. But as each day of this month has passed by and I've said those words, it helps me to dwell with the Good Shepherd. It allows me to dwell when, when things aren't going well in our lives to know that as we move through the valley of the shadow of death, as you move through times of uncertainty, God is always there by our side. If you take a look at our website under our January study, you can sign up for the Roman study and you can sign up for the dwelling and scripture study. And I'll get you plugged in as we move into another passage in February to allow God's word to engage us to allow that be to be what it is that's discipling us and allow it to help us be faithful in the call that God has placed in our lives. Second step, as I said, is that we listen for the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's why every Wednesday at noon, we open up the church for prayer. And you don't have to be there for more than five minutes if you don't want to be. If you want to spend the entire hour in prayer, you are more than welcome to do so. This week, hopefully for the last time, it will be here in the youth room. So uh, come on over. We'll make sure the doors are unlocked at noon and we'll lock them back up at one o'clock. But we invite you to come and spend time in prayer to allow the Holy Spirit to, to speak to you. And if you can't come to the sanctuary to do that, then I invite you to do so wherever you are. To, to stop for a few minutes during that noon hour and to say, come Lord Jesus, fill me. Come Holy Spirit, guide me and, and, and lead me so that I may do your work and your will. You know, the season of Lent is coming up soon. And, and one of the things that I will be inviting you to participate is by fasting each Wednesday in the month of Lent. I'll, I'll give you a, a guide on how to do that. And, and I will be fasting with you. And it'll be a way for us to strengthen our lives by, by, by taking something out of our lives and allowing that time of prayer and communion with God to, to fill our lives so that we can prepare our hearts and minds for God's will. We're, we're also going to uh, take ways to, to have you look at taking an hour of your week to be in prayer for our church, to be in prayer for our community, and through the season of Lent all the way up to Easter, to allow us the opportunity for God's Spirit to lead us and to guide us as we prepare to march our way to the cross, to, to march our way to the tomb, and to see the empty tomb and see that the Christ is risen. We are also called to be active in the world around us. You know, we don't participate in services just because it's a good thing to do. We participate in acts of service in the world around us because it allows the opportunity for God's kingdom to break through here and now. And when we take the opportunity to serve in Jesus' name, we abide in God's love and we bear much fruit for all to see. Not so that we can pat ourselves on the back, so that we can continue to point to God. And it let people see the work that he has done in all of us so that more people may get to know who he is. Uh, this upcoming Monday, uh, we have another mobile food pantry event. And, and the last time I looked, all of the spots were filled there. But I know the North Texas Food Bank will be coming back month after month. And we will let you know when it's time to sign up to help participate or volunteer with the next mobile food pantry. And I implore you to come and be a part of that, to, to see how that work is done and, and to allow your witness of Jesus Christ to, to be seen by others so that they may see and believe. Because that's what we're called to do. 
That's what we're called to do as a church. We are called to expand God's kingdom. You know, each Sunday, when I do the benediction, and when we we have that that final song, I, I I usually say that we hope that you were blessed by this service, and we hope that you share and invite a friend. Now that may be sharing what you've heard today, which I see what some of you do on on, on social media. You you share what you've heard in the service today, either songs or or something that I I have said, or, or a way that God has spoken to you through uh, the message. Or I, I hear you you uh, talk about how you invite people to come and listen and see how they can have a relationship with Jesus Christ through the act of worship here. Now, it isn't so that we can be a bigger church. That, that's not important to me. But it's because as we live our lives rooted in Christ, we want to share what God has done with us with others. And we want them to have the opportunity to experience God's love and grace in their lives so that they can then go out and make disciples. Because my friends, one of the things that I know is, is that the best person to make a disciple of Jesus Christ is another disciple. When, when you have the power and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ bubbling up inside of you, when, when you have fixed your eyes on Christ, when, when you set your hearts and minds on those things above, and, and when you are living your life as rooted in Christ, people will notice and people will want to experience that love and grace that you so much uh, to live in. There's a story of Rich Mullins, who uh, was a, a Christian music artist. He, uh, after he passed away, there were some people that were talking about him. And uh, one of the persons that was talking to him, that Rich Mullins was uh, like somebody in uh, a, a pub and uh, having a, a really, really good time. And, and somebody across the way would, would take a look over and they would say, man, I want to have what they're having. That's what life filled in Christ. That's what an awakened life in Christ is like. Is that when people take a look at us, they see and they go, you know what? I don't know what they have, but I want that. I want that in my life so that I can be full and happy and, and filled with joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. I want that life in my life so that I can be filled with all good things that God has for us. Does that mean that life is going to be easy? No. No, it doesn't. But I would much rather go through the darkest times in my life with Jesus by my side than try to handle it on my own. I would much rather go through all the deepest and darkest times in my life with other followers of Christ around me to support me, to, to, to lift me up in prayer, to, to allow me to feel the love of Christ in others, to help us, each one of us, to look at each other and say, wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead so that Christ may shine in all of us. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of love and grace. And Lord, I know even in my own life, sometimes it's easy to fall asleep. We get tired. We get worn out. But when those moments happen in my life, it, I realize that the reason why I'm tired, the reason why I'm worn out is because I'm trying to do life on my own. I'm not counting on you. I, I'm not allowing your word to fill my life. I, I'm not allowing uh, the Holy Spirit to, to engage me. I'm not active in the world around, around me sharing your love and grace with others. And I am not trying to expand your kingdom to allow others hear who you are. 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your church. So, Lord, as we give you thanks, we pray that you guide us and lead us to be your faithful disciples. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.